I'd love to make it sound like I'm very frustrated and there are some great ideas I've had that I never was able to do. But there aren't. Everything I thought of, I did. Now I can just relax and go to your patients. <laughs>
we would get our sales figures every other month or something like that. When the sales figures came in, Martin came running into my office. He said, Stan, Stan, do you remember that character Spider-Man that we both loved so much? <laughs> make a series of it, and that's how Spidey was born. <laughs> Only that fly on your wall knew what would have been created. Uh, we'll go over on this side. Hi Sam, my name is Andrew. Thank you so much for everything that you've given us all. Um, my question is about uh, when I was a kid, I always loved watching Saturday morning cartoons, Incredible Hulk, and Spidey and his friends, and at the end of every episode, you always said, Excelsior. Where did that come from, and can you please say Excelsior? <laughs> I can only judge by what I like. 
And I figure if I like something, I'm not that unique. There must be a lot of other people who have the same taste. And I know I love these movies. I can't wait till they come out. I can't wait to see them. So they must be good. <laughs> On this side, hello. Hi. Um, so if you could make a DC character before they did, who would it be and how would you have done it differently? No, it's funny you say that. I, I don't know why, but years ago, DC Comics asked me if I would write my version of their top characters. And I forget what they, they printed, and it, it was a series they had. It was called something like, What If Stan Lee Had Created Superman? What If Stan Lee Had Created Batman? And there was one, and I wrote my own version of Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, The Green Lantern, and a few others that I've forgotten. And the terrible thing about it, the stories I wrote were good, and they were illustrated beautifully, but there's no way that DC can make movies of them, because that would be putting down their own characters the way they are. So those books are just there, they sold well, but they couldn't turn into movies. I feel sorry for Dean Speakers. That series is Just Imagine, if you want to check it out. Just, just Imagine. imagine. Yeah. Um, over on the side, hello. Uh, hello, Mr. Lee. Uh, I was wondering, uh, what do you think of how other comic book writers have handled your characters over the years? What do you think of how other comic book it's funny, sometimes it comes through loud and clear, and sometimes the microphones don't work. Well. What do I think about the way other writers have handled my characters over the years? Pretty good. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll be very honest with you. I keep so busy now with so many other things, I don't really have time to read the comic books anymore. I look at the covers, and very often when I'm at a convention, I'm doing autographing, People will give me a cover to sign, and it'll be a cover I never saw before. Usually, most of them are covers I never saw before, because they knew it. And I never have the time to look at the book, because the guy is there, i got to sign it, and there's somebody else in line, so I get up and give him back the book. And I wish you people would wait and give me a chance to look at the story. <laughs> but actually, we have the top writers in the business. And even though I don't really have time to read the stuff anymore, I'm sure that, I'm sure they're great. They must be, because the books are selling like there's no tomorrow. Uh, of the artists you work with over the years, do you have a favorite memory of working with Jack Kirby? Oh gosh, I have favorite memories of all of them. Jack Kirby was incredible. He was so imaginative. When I mentioned I wanted a villain called Galactus, before I was finished telling him about it, he had drawn the character, and he was great. And Jack had a way of drawing. It was as though the drawing was already on the page, and he was tracing it, because he would just start, do the drawing, go on to the next drawing. He never went over it. He never erased it and changed it. Whatever he put down was sort of perfect, and he just kept going. And then there was John Buscema, who was like the Michelangelo of the comics. This guy could draw figures like nobody else. And there was Gene Colvin and John Romita and Steve Dick. I mean, I could talk about them all day. One of the things that made my stories, I think, look better than they were is the fact that they were drawn so beautifully. I was lucky to work with probably the best artists in the business ever. And I loved them all. You're always pointing at people on that side or that side. How about people on the side? Do they have nothing to say? We've got, we've got them lined up on the side. Oh, that's how it works. Yeah. Yeah, why? <laughs> I should have known there's a method to everything. <laughs> I don't hear anything. Did <laughs> anybody hear anything?
being a little shy, Cascade would like to ask you what the favorite cartoon you've done voice work for. Favorite what cartoon have you done voice work for? Oh, I love them all. You know, I'm not a guy really who has favorites. Uh, I tend to like everything I do. And I've done, I've done so many voices. Sometimes I go to the studio and I do a voice, and I don't even know what I'm doing it for. They just give me the script as they read this, and you'll be the mayor of the, t I'm the, I'm the mayor of the town in some Marvel cartoon script. I swear I don't know what script that is, but I make a great mayor, let me tell you. And in, in some others, some other characters, and, oh, I just did a, was well, not really a cameo, it's more like a real role. I just did a role in Kevin Smith's new movie. If you know Kevin Smith, he's a So when you see this new movie, I can't tell you what it is. My, my friend Mike there, uh, Max rather, is getting so nervous because I'm not allowed to mention what it is. And he's afraid I'm going to mention it. We'll all be in trouble. It's okay, Max, I won't tell what it was. But I was magnificent in it, of course. <laughs> Whatever, Max. 
Bible says. See, he pays me. Not much. Not enough. anything 
and nothing would ever hurt you. A guy shoots at you, the bullet misses, because you're lucky. You want to win the lottery and get a hundred million dollars, you win it, because you're lucky. The only reason I can't write a superhero with the power of luck, all these guys have to be visual. They have to look interesting in some sort of outfit. I can't think of any reason why a guy who's lucky would wear a costume. <laughs> so that's the... Oh, I shouldn't have said this, because now some other writer may hear what I've said, and he'll think of a way to give him a costume, and he'll write about my lucky hero, and I'll have lost that whole idea. All of you, forget I said that. <laughs> Remember. I thought you were going to say spider webs coming out of your butt. <laughs> I will never hear the end of that. <laughs> Got time for two more, so we'll do one there and then a last one over there. Hi, hi Mr. Lee. Um, I was wondering, um, everyone loves, you know, Superman, Batman, the Fantastic Four and all that. I was wondering, when are people finally going to love mutants? <laughs> I mean, speaking as a black woman, I know I've been going through the whole thing. That's what you usually, that's what you're focused on, but when are people going to finally accept and have, you know, people love mutants. Like the X-Men? Yeah, like the X-Men. Yeah. When would they have to summarize that? Yeah. <laughs> but when are the X-Men, when are mutants going to get the same love that Spider-Man and, and Superman and, and characters like that have gotten? Yeah, when, when will the mutants get that much love from them? Well, if people, if the public starts loving the mutants, then we wouldn't have any excuse to do mutant books. They have to be disliked so that you can have the fighting and the philosophy and the psychology involved. But if they're suddenly accepted by the public, then they become like anyone else. And our characters must never become like anyone else. <laughs> Last question, we're on the right. Am I working? Okay. Uh, first off, I want to ask, since you are more than 20 minutes late, do we get free pizza? <laughs> Okay, um, also my real question is, uh... Oh, sure. You're all entitled to a pizza. Can somebody get these people a pizza? Uh, my real question, uh, based on some of the Marvel movies you've done cameos in, I'm not going to name names, what was so wrong with Mallrats that it took you until now to do another Kevin Smith cameo? I don't know. Kevin and I are big friends. And I've been on his, uh, he has a little show uh, where he, he's in a comic book store. I've been on that. And he's done a million interviews with me for his radio site and things. But I think he feels the movies he does you know, they're not big budget movies, and I think they don't rate a man of my master. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have another question for you. How come if you saw me, and you must have seen it, in the Big Bang Theory? <laughs> how come they haven't asked me back? your letters and emails and you make sure, oh, and another thing, obviously you people have a lot of influence, so I want you to figure out a way to contact the Motion Picture Academy and find out why they don't have an award for the best cameo of the year. <laughs> Me, I'm okay. <laughs> hey, listen, you people are wonderful. Thanks a million, Thank you.